What exactly is meant by the term kosher wine, and how does it compare to standard wine in terms of flavor? In a word, the answer is no. The flavor is unaffected in kosher wines. In this video we are going to talk about kosher wines. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Having said that, there are significant distinctions between kosher wines that might even be of interest to non-Jews who have dietary restrictions, such as those who are vegan or vegetarian. As an illustration, a lot of kosher wines are vegan. Onward. What is kosher wine? Kosher food is required to be eaten by anyone who follows the religious dietary restrictions of the Jewish religion, kashrut. The religious rules prescribe certain procedures and practices to be followed in the production of food and wine. As a matter of fact, the word kosher was derived from the Hebrew word forfeit, which means that it refers to food that is suitable for consumption. Did it cross your mind? It is not necessary for a rabbi to bless wines in order for them to be considered kosher. Good quality kosher wine, right? Or nay? The production of kosher wine adheres to the same general guidelines as the production of regular wine. It makes no difference where the Cabernet Sauvignon grapes are planted, they are cultivated and harvested in the same manner, fermented in the same temperature-controlled tanks, matured in the same tiny oak barrels, and bottled in the same way regardless of where they are grown. The winemaker will have received their education at a prestigious institution such as the University of California, Davis, and the winery's equipment will be virtually identical. A winery that produces kosher wines is the same as any other winery, even those that don't produce kosher wines. It makes no difference to the quality of a wine whether it is kosher or not. There is no correlation between a kosher certification and quality. This operates in both directions. A kosher wine that is poorly crafted is still a terrible wine, nevertheless, the fact that it is kosher does not make it automatically worse. In a similar vein, critics at the highest level award wines that are kosher 90 points or more out of 100, and these wines go on to win awards and gold medals at the most important competitions. The fact that a wine is or is not kosher has no bearing on its overall quality. The majority of kosher wines are high-quality wines, they just so happen to be kosher as well. There are three primary classifications of wines that are considered to be kosher. They are as follows. Kosher produced in a way that has been vetted and found to be in compliance with the Jewish dietary laws, kashrut. Kosher for Passover. Wine that has not been tainted by the presence of bread, grain, or goods manufactured with leavened dough, as you already figured, this definition fits the vast majority of wines. The majority of wines that are kosher can also be considered kosher for Passover. Kosher lo mehadrin. Wine that has been meticulously examined and deemed to be in compliance with the laws of kashrut. Why then do kosher wines sometimes have a poor reputation, given that they are comparable to wines that are not kosher? It is not out of the question that the idea of yayin mabushal, which literally translates to cooked wine, as well as the consumption of sweet sacramental wines are connected in some way. Sacramental Wines even though Manischewitz and other sweet red wines are kosher, these are known as Kiddush wines in Jewish parlance since they are used in religious ceremonies. In addition to having a flavor that is frequently described as being similar to that of syrupy sugared water, the consumer has traditionally placed a greater emphasis on low price and religious certification than on product quality. To their great fortune, more and more Jewish households are opting to use dry table wines when celebrating holidays and giving blessings. Wines for the Kiddush should not be confused with kosher table wines. Mavushal Wine Mavushal wine, pronounced M-E-V-U-S-H-L, is the only type of wine that can be served at kosher restaurants and caterers in the United States. Because this is a kosher wine that has been flash pasteurized, it will continue to be kosher even if it is served by a server who does not observe Jewish law or who is not Jewish. There is no difference in the level of kosher compliance between wines that are or are not Mavushal. Over the course of the years, improvements have been made to the methods of flash pasteurization. Check out the following sentence for some exciting news about a new technology. Having stated that, the vast majority of kosher wines of higher grade are not mabushal. Wine Folly explains the process of making kosher wine. How is kosher wine made? 
Do you remember when we said that the process of making kosher wine is a little bit different from the process of making regular wine? It's possible that the fact that kosher wines are not sanctified by rabbis will come as a surprise to you. There are two primary requirements that must be met in order to produce kosher wines. In the winery, Jewish workers are required to do all of the handling. From the moment the grapes are delivered to the winery, only religious Jews are permitted to handle the wine or touch the machinery therein. It is forbidden to take samples from the barrels, even for Jewish winemakers who do not adhere to Orthodox Jewish law. Kosher winemakers are used to this constraint, and it is not a restriction that impacts the wine's quality in any way. This may be annoying for a hands-on winemaker, but they are used to it. There are now more stringent regulations regarding wine additives. Yeasts, fining, and cleaning materials are required to have a kosher certification and cannot be generated from animal byproducts in order to be considered suitable for use. As an illustration, some examples of fining agents that are not allowed are gelatin, a derivation of animals, isinglass, a derivative of dairy, and casein, because it comes from a non-kosher fish. Many kosher wines are an excellent choice for vegetarians, and some are even good for vegans if egg white is not used. There are an even greater number of requirements for kosher wine in Israel. In order to manufacture kosher wine in Israel, the vineyards where the grapes are grown are required to follow agricultural regulations that have their roots in the Bible. In a technical sense, the regulations governing the cultivation of grapes in Israel are the oldest wine laws in the world. You can take that delineation of Tokaji from 1757. It's interesting to note that the following procedures are strikingly comparable to high-quality viticulture, grape growing, procedures that are employed in different parts of the world. It is prohibited to make wine from the grapes harvested from a vine during its first three years of production, known as Orla. The winery is not allowed to process the grapes into wine until the fourth year after they have been planted. It is very forbidden to cultivate any other kinds of fruit between the vines. Kilai Hakarim in the past, this was a common practice in domestic vineyards throughout Spain and Italy, however, due to concerns regarding the quality of the wine, this method has been mostly phased out. The land is permitted to lie fallow and get some much-needed rest once every seven years. Schmidt sabbatical year. However, because of the realities of the economy, there are inventive methods to deal with this dilemma. Rabbis and winemakers work together to find solutions, which allows for some degree of flexibility. In memory of the 10% tithe that was traditionally given to the temple in Jerusalem, over 1% of the production is wasted by being poured away. The Books of Taramat and Maaserat In biblical times, a socially progressive idea was to set aside a portion of the harvest for those who were in need while also allowing the land and the people who worked the land to rest during the sabbatical year, which occurred every seventh year. The most fundamental questions regarding the relationship between spirituality and materialism are addressed by these practices. They mostly serve as symbols in modern times. Where to look for wine that is kosher. You can discover wines that are considered to be kosher in nearly every style, made from almost every grape variety, and produced in almost every country that makes wine. Additionally, at any price point, for example, between $5 and $100 for a bottle. The United States, Israel, and France are the countries with the largest selections of kosher wines. The states of New York, New Jersey, California, Florida, Illinois, and Texas are among those in the United States that offer the most extensive selection of kosher wines. The majority of liquor stores located in Jewish neighborhoods will dedicate an entire wall to kosher wines. Where to look for quality kosher wine? The market for kosher wine is influenced by the same tendencies as the market for non-kosher wine. At the moment, there is a surge in the popularity of Moscato, a resurgence in enthusiasm for rose and sparkling wines, and an abundance of dry red wines. There are wineries that exclusively produce kosher wines. In addition, some vineyards make a kosher cuvee in addition to their standard wines. In the realm of kosher food and drink, there are also a lot of white-label wines, these are wines whose brand is well known but not their origin. What do you think about this video? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you want to hear from us again, make sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.